Welcome back to the program. Treasurer Jim Chalmers really is the Cinderella treasurer. If, as widely predicted, he announces a budget surplus tonight, it will be because of two things. Good coalition foundations and the luck of being in the chair for good resources prices. The mining boom continues to rain money on this nation and the record intake of migrants and the nasty effect of tax bracket creep is bringing in even more cash with the overall income tax take now reaching a record high. Labor finds itself with the fattest purse any government has seen in years. But will they use it to grow the industry that has given them this golden egg? Or will they continue to block projects and demonise traditional energy sources? With me to break this down is National's Senator, Liberal National Senator for Queensland, Matt Canavan. Matt, thank you so much for joining me. Is there anything more dangerous to this country than a Labor government with a wallet full of cash? Uh, well, uh, I, I could probably think of a few things, but there's no doubt that uh, uh, this government, uh, in a very short space of time, is doing enormous damage to our economic prosperity. Uh, as you alluded to there, they're doing nothing to attract uh, the kind of investment that our country needs to maintain our strong economic performance. In fact, all of their decisions have been uh, to push away investment in one of our most important sectors in, in mining. Uh, the, the government is now adding fuel to the inflation fire uh, by more spending tonight. Uh, it's a very schizophrenic treasurer that we've got right now. Only a few weeks ago, Jim Chalmers was saying how he wants to uh, control inflation. He has to try and cut spending. And obviously, he's lost battles against other ministers in the expenditure review committee uh, because now, this week, he's talking about, oh, I've got heaps of cash and I'm just doling it out left, right and centre. Well, that's only going to increase inflation. And while the government seems very chuffed with its own budget today, uh, the budgets of uh, most Australian families are under a lot more stress and they don't look like they'll be helped uh, by the announcement in under an hour's time. Yeah, that self-congratulations and hubris is really out of step with the experience of most Australians right now. The, the last mining boom got us relatively unscathed through the last global financial crisis. But what's driving this one and can the boom last? Well, what's driving this mining boom is incredible demand for our high-quality products, especially in Asia, as they recovered from the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, of course, you've had a situation in Europe where Europe's had to demand and buy coal from all around the world, including ourselves, coal and gas, and that's helping uh, produce more wealth for our nation. But effectively, we're living off borrowed time uh, with this mining boom because the record exports we're seeing uh, today... Uh, are a result of investments made yesterday, the investments that have been made over the last decade, record investments in a new LNG industry, record investments in coal helped deliver this. Uh, but we're not getting those investments in the sector today. In fact, it's hard to point to a major expansion of any uh, mining uh, commodity right now in Australia because of this red tape regulation and new taxes uh, that the Labor Party are putting in place I mean, last month, the last time we were here in Canberra, we saw a new carbon tax be placed on the mining industry. Last year, we saw export controls and price caps be placed on the mining industry. Uh, and, and we now, tonight, are going to learn about more taxes being placed uh, on the gas sector. And so there's, there's just no reason for investors to come to Australia right now. And if we don't attract that investment today, we're not going to be getting this kind of bounty in 10 or 15 years' time. That'll be a lot, will mean we'll be a lot poorer and we won't be able to fund lots of public services that we can tonight. It seems just so short-sighted. The flood of migrants, some 650,000 people that have come into the country, might be great for this year's figures, but it will no doubt cause some headaches in years to come because of our housing and infrastructure shortages, unless this government can get its head around decentralisation and the need to grow Australia's regions. How are they going on that front? Mm. That's a great question, Amanda. Uh... Uh, you're absolutely right to say and point to this high records of migration. I mean, I, I'm not against migration, but we should make sure that Australians have a house first uh, before others come to our country. And right now, I'm hearing shocking stories of people in your hometown in Brisbane, major cities, having to live in tents because this is working people with jobs, but having to live in tents because they can't find adequate housing here. So until we fix a domestic housing issue, we shouldn't be allowing other people coming in and take houses that could otherwise be used by Australians. The government's got to do more to encourage housing development. But over the long term, we've got to build new cities. I mean, we can't just keep stacking people up. 
in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. If we do that, we're going to get increasingly high house prices and no one but the rich will be able to afford a basic home in the future. We've actually, if we're going to grow as a country and we're going to have, if, if the Labor Party wants to bring in 600,000 people a year, that's more than the size of, of Canberra, well, they have, to, they have to bring in, sorry, it's over two years, more than the size of Canberra every two years, They've got to build new cities. We've got to build new cameras, new cities, and we should be investing in, in North Queensland, uh, in regional New South Wales, all around the country, uh, so that we don't just keep stacking people up into cities where housing is already very expensive. Yeah, and we've got to keep that dream of home ownership within reach, not just stacking people as permanent renters in social housing either. Has a place, but in small quantity. Gas companies, moving on are expected to pay for many of Labor's handouts tonight. It's an almost doubling of the petroleum and resources rent tax, but what's going to be its impact? Well, look, I'll wait to see the detail on this one, uh, Amanda. Uh, I mean, I'm not against reform of our tax system from time to time, and there's no doubt perhaps the, that particular tax, the petroleum resource rent tax, has not raised what it expected. It's actually a royalty, really. It's probably misnamed as a tax, but... These are the areas of the country which the Commonwealth owns the resource, out in our offshore areas. And, and Australian people should get a return on those resources which they own. The gas companies lease them uh, and they should pay for that, uh, that right. So I'm not against that. Let's wait and see the detail. But in context, the problem with this is, is it's another tax from the Labor Party on top of a tax, as I said last time we hear a carbon tax on the same businesses, on top of uh, red, new red tape and environmental uh, uh, red green tape coming in soon. Uh, on top of uh, putting price caps on their products. Uh, I mean, you're just racking up the reasons here for people not to come and invest in Australia. And I hear so often now from those in the resources sector that they see Canada as a more attractive place. They see the left-wing Trudeau government as a more attractive place uh, to invest their money than Australia. It is a shocking damnation of a government that's been in power for less than a year. And we better hope they, they wake up to themselves soon. Because, as I say, if we don't get that investment today, we're going to be much poorer tomorrow. And that cost of energy is going to keep creeping out of reach. Thank you so much for your time, Matt, and uh, thank you for your advocacy for the regions.